Hi, so I'm going to do a series of videos on deadlocks and uh, for this particular video I'm going to go through how to query for deadlocks uh, using extended events and uh, this is quite handy because um, once you activate it it'll trace the deadlocks for you and keep a historical record uh, unlike the unlike doing the tracing uh, using the trace flags and uh, profiler which you actually have to uh, be an active participant and actually have the deadlock happen. Um, this is not the case so it's very handy in production because uh, in production you don't really know when a deadlock will happen so this will have the historical um, kind of a history that you could actually query on versus uh, being in the uh, SQL Server logs. Uh, so the way to do that is uh, um, I, I have a series of code here where I'm going to create a deadlock so um, this is going to be available in this description area. So I'm just going to run this really quickly and create a deadlock here. So this one's going to deadlock because I have this in low. Um, so once this deadlocks, let me run the, so that deadlocked, uh, let me run the store procedure here. And again, I'm going to have this in the description area of the um, video for you to cut and paste and use for your own uh, production needs. Uh, so I'm going to run this here and you'll notice um, it produces a query here with two XML columns. And one of them is the deadlock graph, uh, which is just a series of um, dead, uh, of XMLs with um, kind of w what the victim is. There's a couple of sections of what the victim is, the processes involved, and the resources uh, that are locked or waiting or um, the status of uh, the requested resources. Uh, but I'm going to go through that in another video. Uh, what I really wanted to go through is how to set this up. So in SQL Server Management Studio, you'll have the management node. And under the management node, there's uh, something new here called extended events. And this is actually available in SQL Server 2012 and 2014 with a GUI. Uh, in 2008, the, uh, R2, there's no GUI, but you could actually uh, run the create event session commands to actually do the tracing. So here I have um, by default something called system health. And if I look at the properties of how to set it up, uh, it's similar to Profiler where there's a bunch of events. So the most important event here, well, let me put this back into the list, for deadlocks is the XML deadlock report. So if I move it over to the events I want to track, and I highlight it and I click configure, I, I could actually um, select the things that I am interested in. Uh, your typical things like, you know, what's the database ID, database name, um, process ID stuff like that so so that's what's gonna go into the deadlock graph um, so that's how you that's how you're gonna do it as far as tracing it now once you select your events in here you do have to start and stop the session um, by default it's it's on and in SQL Server 2008 it is on by default and I, I find that in my production environment it actually does trace the deadlocks already, uh, but there is uh, a different latency as far as um, uh, kind of, uh, let me show you here. So here you have the maximum dispatch latency and this is set to two minutes. What that means is um, after the event happens, uh, after two minutes, it'll actually populate the system event tables for you to be able to query on it. Um, so in production actually it's set up to be a couple of days like four or five days I think that's default in SQL Server R2 um, whereas here I have it set to two minutes so the events that happened two minutes ago actually shows up uh, so that's how you use extended events to capture a deadlock, a deadlock graph and deadlock report and I hope you find this uh, helpful uh, definitely tune in for my other videos on uh, how to do it the old way with the profiler and me um, going through the deadlock graph and the meaning of each section. Alright, thank you for watching.